Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to the Israel Watch. Welcome to this unique afternoon. Everyone that is not heading, heading to Heronhood in this very moment is with us. We have the Israel Watch. As I said, today is August 7th. 3 p.m. Jerusalem time, lots to, to probably go through, lots to be alert on. Josie, thank you for hosting and take it away. Thank you. And thank you, Chanel. And by the way, I really love your name, but I, but I do like Chanel perfume as well. <laughs> but it is, it's a lovely name. It's so pretty and beautiful. So, yeah. Um, so, yes. Hello to everybody. I don't think there's going to be a lot of us today but as you know God's not into numbers and neither are we if there's just two of us gathered we can make a big difference still uh, and we shouldn't ever diminish the power of any of our prayers whether they be long or short or just the declaration of a scripture God works with this so thank you for those that have um sacrifice to come on. I know for some of you, uh, it's very early in the morning, and that's even more of a sacrifice if you're not a morning person like me. Uh, so this is uh, such a crucial time in Israel. I mean, it's so intense here. <laughs> it's hard to describe it. It's like wading through swamp every day, if I could describe it that way. Um, and that's just in the natural, trying to get through the day to get everything done that you have to get done. But it's because of the dome of the spiritual realm that's hanging over us. And um, for me, you know, I've done war here before. I've done a war, very intense, emotional roller coaster ride. Uh, not pleasant, not pleasant, very scary. Um, but I really believe in hindsight of that war that. Um, Myself and my husband and our sons were in at the time um, on the front battles, front lines again, since they're always on the front lines, then as soldiers, today as reservists. I believe that that war in 2006, the second Lebanon war, was child's play in comparison to what we're, we're dealing with now. So uh, this is why it makes you feel when you're in Israel, <laughs> the way I just described it. Um, but nonetheless, we, we press on and, uh, you know, we just have to uh, prepare the best we can and trust God. So um, on Tuesday, uh, early Tuesday morning, um, I had this flash thought as I was just sitting meditating before the Lord. And uh, I want to just bring this before the watch today. And I do want to ask that you prepare yourselves to pray, intercede, declare something on this watch today it, it's such a crucial time as I said and here we are together in unity all the nations with Israel and we can make a difference we can push back darkness today in this one hour of being together so uh, back on Tuesday morning I was um, meditating and just before the Lord and I was thinking about um, Bain Hametzarim or the dire straits as you know it's, a, it's English dire straits or well, the three weeks, or we could say the 21 days, um, this year in Israel, I was thinking about this, and um, it perfectly describes what this time is. Bain HaMetzarim last year in Israel was nothing like this. And just to open up more widely some descriptions of what Bain HaMetzarim can feel like, here in the land at this time and particularly this year. It's a time of distress. It's troubled days. It's great difficulty. It feels like being squeezed into a narrow place, not being able to get out of it, feeling hard pressed on every side, feeling quite closed in actually on every side as well. A sense of being trapped in a way, difficult days and difficult ways. Uh, kind of like stuck because we feel stuck because we're waiting. We're in this waiting game, this psychological waiting game that I run, you know, is putting on us because none of us know when. We're not being told by our government or our military leaders when this 
war will kick into action, we just sit and wait every day as and as prepared as we can be. So it's it's um, nerve wracking in a in a way. And just one other sort of description of what it feels like. It's like threading our way through a dangerous place, and that is actually very true because it's a very dangerous place that we're working our way through and i feel all those descriptions describe and sound like israel today um and as we all know Beit Hamet Zareem, it ends on tisha ba'al which is next sunday night our day starts at the end of the day or sunset and that will begin next sunday evening and go through to monday evening on the sunset that will be Tisha B'Av, the 24 hours of Tisha B'Av. And as I was pondering about all of that, this three weeks and 21 days that we were in, I just had this flash thought. It came in because I wasn't thinking this. It just that this flash thought of, of Daniel 10 and the 21 days that Daniel was in what I would call actually his Bain HaMetzarim. It was like a personal Bain HaMetzarim. He he was really like all what I described, feeling pressed in and kind of stuck. He couldn't do anything. He just had to stay in that place of prayer. He couldn't go anywhere. He was definitely treading through a dangerous uh, time. Um, so I thought about all of this and how he was really uh, face to face with that, that prince of Persia. And this is obviously still what we are battling spiritually for um, in Israel today. And we, we haven't had an answer yet at all to the concentrated, intense prayer and intercession and fastings, specifically over these almost three weeks or 21 days where thousands and thousands of intercessors have been praying and interceding and fasting for Israel. Uh, and yes, um, so he had, Daniel had his breakthrough, of course, at the end of that 21 days when the angel appeared to him. And I wanted just to read from Daniel 10 and verse 12. And it says, then the Lord said to Daniel, do not fear, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself or pray, that word humble can be interpreted as prayer, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. Well, I found comfort in that scripture. Right from the beginning, even though he didn't hear, God heard every word that was spoken, decreed, declared, or any prophetic act that may have been done. And he said, I have come because of your words. And so I want to endorse again here today on this watch. Release from your mouth today words from the scriptures, words from your heart that the Holy Spirit's inspiring or percolating within you to decree because we, we need to believe that God's going to come because of our words and our prayers, our intercessions to him, humbling ourselves before him. And it certainly is a time of being humbled. Um, and that he will come again for Israel because of these declarations and our faith today and our humility before him in prayer. Um, I really believe that he will. And I'm sure each and every one of you are as well as you stand with us. The angel appointed to watch over Israel, as most of you know, is Michael in Hebrew or Michael in English. And in Hebrew, Michael means who is like God. And he is actually the first ranking officer, the highest officer in Yeshua's army. And this angel, I, I believe, and I know you believe, will again fight for Israel um, and fight against this prince of Persia because it's exactly the same spirit. But God wants to co-labor with us as well, doesn't he? He wants to co-labor with us and as we... Um, release our faith because it's raw faith that we're, we're trusting him to come. Well, I am anyway here in the, in the battle waiting for it all to happen. I'm, I'm really believing my faith is um, very stretched, uh, but stretched it is. And I'm believing that God is going to, to come through and do some great things. 
Um, so as we co-labor with him, because he asked us to be co-laborers with him, um, in faith, we can we can decree or declare or proclaim or pray into and intercede into into the darkness, into the heavenlies for the decrees of the powers of darkness to be broken and their prophecies of calamity upon Israel to fall and to bring confusion um, into their plots or their strategies. And so along with that, I just want to briefly now uh, share that I was also taken at the very beginning of the week, actually, on Sunday, um, to Nahum. It's a, it's a unusual book, which I haven't read very much, really, in my decades of being a believer even, but I really felt compelled to, to go there. And um, just um, to add in that, the name or the word Nahum is actually derived from the Hebrew word of uh, comfort. So uh, I just want to read a few verses from that because what I'm trying to bring here is our faith and co-laboring with God, but really it's our faith because, because God needs something from us to work with. And I believe it's the... Um, dynamic of faith that he can take and he he can work with it because he says that um let it be done unto you according to your faith and i believe he can take our faith he can breathe on it he can he can kiss it so to say he can work with it he has something to work with it from us so as we're releasing our faith and what we're going to do and with the co-laboring of the decrees and the, de the um, declarations and the prayer then we can leave it with him to do what only he can do, and that is to bring that vengeance upon those powers of darkness and that prince of Persia. And I felt Nahum really described that. Uh, so I just want to read a few verses from Nahum 1, where it says, The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but he's great in power. That, that was verses 2 and 3. And then, then just to read from verse 6, it said, Who can stand before his indignation? That brings comfort to me as well with what we're facing. Because these powers, uh, these spirits, they do have power as well. But of course, God is more powerful. But it said, who can, who can stand against his indignation? And who can endure the fierceness of his anger? And then the beautiful part that I was really blessed by and, and helped fortify my faith for this imminent war that we're about to enter into. In verse 7, it says, the Lord is good. And a stronghold or a stronghold or a fortress um, fortress in Hebrew is ma'oz. And if we think about a fortress, a fortress is a wall that is thick and strong to prevent the penetration or the access of an enemy from outside that wall to enter in. So he will be a stronghold in the day of trouble, and Israel's in her day of trouble. So this is a promise that the Lord has given. He will be good to us, Israel, and he will be that fortress, that strong fortress um, for us in this day of war and trouble. And it goes on to say, for he knows those who trust in him. So, yeah, I just was joining those two things together, that we um, release our faith, he'll honor the faith, and we'll leave it to him to do what uh, only he can do in the area of vengeance and truly pulling down and conquering, but we co-labor with him to do that and he's looking to us for that. You know, we can do it on his own, but he seems to enjoy co-laboring with us and us co-laboring with him. So uh, I know that his goodness and his justice compels him to orchestrate the downfall of oppressive nations that come against Israel. And Daniel, as in the man, we could say figuratively represents the nation of Israel today as we continue to contend with this power of darkness. 
And just before we, perhaps we can each uh, go into some intercession, I want to declare this from Daniel, two verses from Daniel, Daniel 6 and verses 26, um, the last half of 26 and 27. For he, the God of Israel, I'm adding that in, but I want to be specific. I like declaring who he is and who, who the God he is. So for he, the God of Israel, is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom, God's kingdom, the God of Israel's kingdom, is the one which shall not be destroyed. The other kingdoms or the other empires will be destroyed and those other empires will fall. But his kingdom shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure forever. He, the God of Israel, delivers, and he, the God of Israel, rescues, and he, the God of Israel, works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth and in Israel. And he will deliver, I believe, Israel, just like he delivered Daniel from those raging lions. And so he will deliver Israel from um these raging lions up in the north of where we are. So a man and a man, because he is the ancient of days, he hasn't changed, he's the same God in power and might and awe, awesomeness as he was in those days. So with that, uh, maybe I could ask, maybe Michael, if you would want to head off, launch us, Yes. Yeah, into some intercession. Yeah, I want to declare from Isaiah 28, 21. This was the verse that the Lord gave to Rania at the start of the 40 days of fasting. For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. So, Lord, we thank you that you are rising up in this time, Lord. You prepared your people to participate with you, to rise up to okay. Mount Gerizim, where David had the strategic advantage over the Philistines. He'll be angry as in the days of Gibeon. That's when Joshua declared the sun to stand still so that Israel... Uh, would defeat their enemies fully. Lord, you're preparing to do your work, your awesome work. I Amen. think of Israel. Uh, they cried out to the Lord. God delivered them. God brought them to the Red Sea and he yes. parted the Red Sea so that his people can pass through safely. And then mm -hmm. God drowned the armies of Pharaoh. Uh, and uh, in Israel, God said, I'm going against the gods of Egypt uh, by the plagues he sent against each of the gods. So, Lord, we believe and we know you've uh, defeated the enemy and you're going to bring the enemy to ruin in these days. All those that rise up against Israel will be destroyed and cast down that you might be glorified, O God not according to our righteousness, but according to your great mercy and according to your great plan, Lord God, which you have to reveal yourself to the nation of Israel and the surrounding nations. So we just thank you, Lord, for raising up uh, that wall of the Red Sea, Lord, that your people can pass uh -huh. miraculously. And God, you will drown, you will bring to confusion. I thank That's you right, for amen. the testimony of Nuna, uh, as she's observed Hezbollah giving news reports, she sees fear in them. Lord, you're bringing your fear upon people because you want to draw people to yourself and break up the power of the enemy and bring it to ruin, Lord God, because you reign over all the earth. You are the God of Israel. And God, you will rise up and do your mighty works, O oh God. We trust you in Yeshua's name. Amen, Michael. Amen. You know, I before I um, maybe call upon Amy, maybe you could um, pray soon. I just wanted to one minute share something from what Michael was praying. Um, 
you know, I constantly, not just in this period of time that we're in right now, but over many years, um, when we've been facing um, terror and the and wars, I always go back to the Exodus and what God did there, because really, that is what we, we seem to always come around and face again. And I love what you said about may the fear of the the Lord come upon our enemies. And that is what happened, wasn't it, in those days in Egypt, as it said, as the Israelites multiplied and grew, uh, that <laughs> they became exceedingly afraid of them. That's because why they wanted to destroy them. And it said that the dread of the Israelites came on them. And uh, yeah, there's so much in that passage of Exodus, the whole story of the Exodus, but um, particularly just at the point of time of the actual Exodus coming out and at the Red Sea, just what God did. It's, it's exactly what we need God to do again today. The scenario is so, so similar and very much exact in the spirit. And uh, But the thing is, there's a, there's a um, I always come to the place of where it was, where it didn't look like it was going to happen. It, God takes you right to the, almost the one minute before midnight. It's that twinkling of the eye. It's that breaking of the dawn. And that, for me, is like... <laughs> You really have to extend and stretch your faith big time uh, because when God doesn't look like he's going to do it, uh, that that really is the big test. But um, we have to take comfort from the fact that um, what he's done in Israel's history in the past, that, that he will do it. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I just love all those scriptures in um, Exodus. Amy. Please bring what you've got. That's interesting you were talking about that because in Deuteronomy for the readings for this week, it talks, first Moses recounted all the things, all the ways that God had been faithful mm -hmm. and they were getting ready to cross over into the Jordan. And in chapter two, it says, get up, get moving and cross the Arnon Valley here i have put in your hands and he tells them i've already put in your hands the king sishon king of heshbon and uh take today i will start putting the fear and dread of you into all the peoples under heaven and so when i was meditating on that whole especially the first chapter it's there were three things that, that that we can expect from the Lord. And it is God is driving us to a place of total trust in him. And oh, yeah. he's driving Israel to that as well. So one, the Lord has already gone before seeking out a place for you to pitch your tent. And that's a place of permanent residence, a place where you will have authority, a place where you are bringing in God's presence. And you are speaking to the nation of Israel about that, Lord. So we decree you have gone before and that you are showing them. The other thing is he will fight for you, it says. We have the past fightings of God as our template. Mm -hmm. And three, he will show you the way to go. He doesn't give us the map, but he shows us by giving us the guide, the Holy Spirit. So we just lift up the nation of Israel, Father. And when I was thinking of the story of David and he was coming with uh, the five smooth stones, we're those living stones that are coming against Goliath and all of his brothers. So Lord, help us to realize we are your army. You've mustered us to the service. Help us to recognize that you have called us into this place. And it's not just Israel, but Israel is our template. So we know that you are going before Israel, you are fighting for Israel, you are surrounding Israel with your presence. So we thank you, Lord, for these promises in your word. They are not just uh, vacuous words. These are words of strength, of words of power. You are watching over these words to perform them. So Lord, visit the IDF. Our, the Knesset, I say our Knesset, I'm, I'm not even Jewish, but uh, this nation is so important to us, Lord. 
that you would visit them and give them wisdom, the army generals, that you are rising up, as Michael said, as at Bel Parazem. You are a general and you are a dread champion. Help us to get that picture in our eyes. Cause that picture to come up into their eyes. Give them visions of you as the man in white. Amen. And we also pray for the Lebanese, Lord. I pray for the country of Lebanon, Lord, that you would sustain them, that you would minister your grace and mercy. Give them encouragement, Lord, because they have been fighting this for a long time with Hezbollah, and them taking over that beautiful country, Lord. Uproot these enemies of Israel and cause them. We're praying for the Palestinians, the Hamas, the the, all of the Islamic, the people and, na and nations that are so deceived Amen. by the power of Islam, Lord, bring them to salvation. Strip away that mask. And many of them are. Many of them are seeing this is a horrible faith. This is a horrible religion. This is something that just breeds violence and death and destruction wherever it is. So we ask, Father, that you would just strengthen the Christians and those that know you, the Messianic believers in the land throughout Lebanon, uh, even in the Middle East, the DMM workers. God, strengthen yes. them and encourage them. Give them boldness and courage. And we thank yes. you, Lord, that your word is true and you are bringing it to pass. We just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I am... Um... Bob, do you have something that you would declare, proclaim? Well, Father, Please. I just declare that, Father, the hearts that are there in Israel today, as well as all the nations, are willing to submit and surrender whatever the flesh is trying to hold on to, and totally, totally trust in you. Your scripture says so many times to not fear, but to trust in you in all things. So I declare that, Lord, today, any fear is an inner conflict in the flesh, and it's not in the spirit realm. And then for those in Israel today to cry out to you, and, and Father, my deep concern, are the hearts really repentive in a way for looking for change? and desire to want to really trust fully, 100%, completely in all lives, in all situations. For the leadership, for, for the legislative, to, to, the, to the military, Lord, that they would listen to your voice only and not to the world's, and that they would have total focus on the purpose and the plan of what this is all about, and to lean on you and not the flesh, and to not allow only the flesh to be disposed of, but did God have the clean hands and the clean heart, the pure heart to do what you want each one of them to be available to do and to do it by faith and not by sight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Who else do we have here? Well, I'd like to actually just um, pray for our military leaders and our government, of course, they're all in the war room. They've already actually gone underground. Um, that's what we saw in our news the other night. I think the day before yesterday, they went underground, which sort of um, spoke quite loudly to us that perhaps maybe this is very close. Um, yeah, our prime minister went under the in the bunker underneath, underground with his wife and his family, and. Of course, obviously, the war room's underneath as well, I would presume. So just praying for, they, they need, really do need the supernatural wisdom and insight um, from God, even if they don't acknowledge it or realize that it's from God, but that he would really um, in, invade their, their minds and their thoughts, their dreams, their, their war strategies and plans as they gather around that war table with, maps and all sorts of other strategies that they need and I'm just going to refer back to Daniel again in chapter 10 and it said that when when the angel came to him that uh, he lost all strength within him but 
the angel said to him, uh, he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, do not fear. Shalom to you. Shalom be with you. Be strong. Yes, he said it twice. Yes, be strong. And um, so when he spoke to Daniel, it said that he was strengthened. And he said, let my Lord speak. You have strengthened me. And our military leaders and our government, they're, they're, they're human. They're human like us. They, they must have times where they feel weak or weakened. Uh, and so I just want to pray, Avenu, our Father, that you will also come to them in some way that you choose to, to come to them, but you would lay your hands on them, just like you, you did with Daniel, who was a leader leading Israel at the time, standing in the gap for Israel. And we're looking to our government and our military leaders to make decisions that uh, uh, where our life is at stake. So we pray that you will send an angel, your angel to them, even in that war room, and you will you will allow strength to be imparted through that angel into their into their mind and their thoughts, their planning, their strategies, their hearts, their souls, their emotions, their their entire being, and they will be strengthened for this battle. You will anoint them for this day of battle, and you will allow your words shalom to also be released into them and over them and around them, that while they're in this place of battle, there will be an underlying shalom that will carry them, that will hold them together and enable them. We pray today, so we pray blessings of this supernatural strength and supernatural shalom and supernatural eye-opening visions and thoughts and strategies and tactics and ideas that will be able to be implemented to bring a great victory for Israel. We pray for that same anointing of Issachar, sons of Issachar, that they will know what to do exactly, exactly what to do, and exactly at what moment to do it, in the day or in the evening or at midnight or during the early hours of the morning. They will be so assured of what time to do this. There will be no doubts. So we trust you with our government and our military leaders um, for these things. In Yeshua's name, amen. Monica, do you have anything that you would like to bring today? Um. Just as you spoke about, I came to the scripture from Isaiah 11, the spirit of the Lord, and I would like to proclaim that about, upon them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Father, we bless all yeah, this, who are in charge now. And Father, we pray that you will come upon them with your spirit. The spirit of, a, of the Lord shall rest upon you the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Yes, Lord, Father, we bless them. We bless them with your spirit, with your wisdom and understanding what to do and what not to do. And like Josie prayed already, all the right timing that they know exactly when to do something father and even we ask you that you will reveal them the hidden plain plans of the enemy that they will have knowledge supernatural knowledge also about the plans what they want to do and that they are always father we ask you that they will be ahead of the enemy father we bless them with your shalom again and with your wisdom in yeshua's name Amen. Amen. I'd like to also just declare some words out of my mouth from this mountain in Israel out there so God can take it and work with it just as a declaration. It's, they're actually the words from a song that 
I've been really blessed by it. And it was, we sang it at last Tuesday's worship watch in the sanctuary up here on Mount Carmel. Um, Colleen was leading worship that day because Karen was still not well from the COVID she had. And it's really remained with me uh, since then. And uh, these will be the words of that song. Um, there, I'm, I'm very much uh, being fortified in my faith from these words. Uh, but today I want to just declare them as a declaration of who God is and what he can do. So these are the words of the song. O oh God of Jacob, fierce and great. Oh, th by the way, this is a song by Shane and Shane. If you want to catch it on YouTube, it's called Psalm 46. And it's the very best rendition, as far as I'm concerned, of Psalm 46 that I've heard. And I've heard a lot of Psalm 46's sung, different melodies, different tunes, different this, different that. But this, for me, is very powerful. It was sung, actually, at a National Day of Prayer in America somewhere. So, O oh God of Jacob, fierce and great, you lift, you lift your voice to speak. The earth, it bows, and all the mountains move into the sea. O oh Lord, you know the hearts of men, and still, still you let them live. Well, that's, that's God's grace and mercy. O oh God, who makes the mountains melt, Come and wrestle and win. Can other come and wrestle with our enemies and win? Give us a victory. Oh God, who makes the mountains melt, come and wrestle and win. Lord of hosts, or other knights ever up, you are with us. You are with us in the fire. You are with us as a shelter. You are with us in the storm. You will lead us through the fiercest battle. Where else would we go? But with the Lord of hosts, or but with Adonai Sebaot. Though oceans roar, you are the Lord of all, the one who calms the wind and waves and makes my heart or the heart of Israel be still. Though the earth gives way, the mountains move into the sea, the nations rage around us. We know our God is in control. Though oceans roar, you are the Lord of all. Hallelujah. Um, but it was primarily, I think, the chorus that has really remained with me. And I've made it my war now mantra. And so I just play this over and over again. It's I'm trying to brain myself. I'm going to brainwash myself with it. <laughs> and that's a good thing because when we brainwash ourselves with something, especially the word of God, it gets in there and we don't have to think about it anymore. It can just be dancing in our spirit or it can just come back to us at any given time and we can release it or sing it. So Abba, I want to thank you today, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel, Adonai Sebaot, that you are with us, Israel, your people. You are for us, your people, Israel. You are with us in this fire, just as you were in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you are with us like a shelter. You are like that fortress, hallelujah, around about the borders of this nation. And you will lead us. You are Adonai Tiberot. You're the one that's leading us as the captain of the armies, the host of Israel. Hallelujah. And we know that this battle will be fierce. But who else and where else can we go but with you? So today, again, by faith, we lift up our people, we lift up our nation, from the oldest to the youngest and everyone in between, our government, our military leaders, our soldiers, and we say we are in your hands and you will take us and you will lead us because we want to go with you. Even these precious people that are standing with us today and all the others out there, they too want to take hold of the seat of a Jewish man called Yeshua the Jewish Messiah, and say, we're going with you because we know God is with you. Adonai Sebaot is with you. Amen. 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 So I'm wondering if there is anybody else. You can open your mic if you have something. Josie, you have two hands raised if you'd like to. Oh, okay. So, yeah, sure. Marguerite, please. That would be wonderful if you could share with us. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, She's Ilana. trying to find her unmute button. I found it. I found it. I found it. Found it. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I was just um, on the phone. It's harder. Uh, I had Nam one seven. I really wanted to declare that, and um, you did that one, so that's great. But I had another one all week. I've been praying through for Israel. It's Zephaniah three, uh, part of sixteen and into seventeen. It says, "Do not fear, Zion. Let not your hands be weak." The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Thank you that you, you're the one that's saying to Israel, do not fear, I am your God. And as in Nahum it said, put your trust in me. I know who put their trust in me because yeah. I am your God and I am mighty to save. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen, Marguerite. Ilona, did you have something you wanted to release, declare, pray, sing even? Yes, Maybe. please. Can you mm -hmm. hear me? Yes, okay. I can. Um, Very, clear. Very okay. good. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I have just come out of surgery a couple of hours ago for my eye, so I'm not seeing very well, but um, I'm going to read from two... Um, Chronicles 20, and it is about Jehoshaphat, who finds himself facing those three nations, uh, the forces of the three nations surrounding him that want to war with him. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago in South Africa, we had very inclement weather, extreme weather conditions. And in Cape Town, where I live, we have Table Mountain, which is a world landmark. People know it. And um, I don't want to go into the details now because it will take up too much time. But somebody sent me a video clip on a particular day. We had the storms, uh, very severe storms, with huge waterfalls coming down Table Mountain, rushing down the mountain side of Table Mountain because of the amount of rain and snow. And And the Lord had about two weeks before that, I woke up one morning with these words, and I knew it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me that said, the Lord says, I am going to reverse the natural order of things. And I've been meditating on those words for all this a couple of weeks now. And it has become clearer to me that what the Lord is saying is he is going to reverse what we see with our eyes and what we hear with our ears in the material world. He's going to shift it in the spirit world to the extent that the only conclusion people will be able to come to is that it, it is God. Mm -hmm. And this war that is being fought in the natural Israel is surrounded. And there is no hope for Israel with our eyes and our ears. But when we look with our spiritual eyes in the word, and we receive the words of the Holy Spirit in our spiritual inner man, in our ears, it's a very different outcome. It's a completely different story. And the Lord was saying to me, um, he, he's, uh, I've written down things. He said, um, I, want you, I want you to remember past victories that I have given you. Recall the past victories. Whether it's personal in your personal life, whether it's national, whether it's international, whether it's for the entire globe, whatever the spiritual victories are that you yourself have experienced, recall them. Because that is the same God who is going to reverse the natural order of things for Israel now. And 2 Chronicles 20, the people come. Uh, to King Jehoshaphat, I just want to read it quickly. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazaron Tamar. And alarmed, Jehoshaphat, this is the first key, I believe, to overcoming this situation Israel is in. This is one of the spiritual keys. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. We must resolve to inquire from the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast, which is what we are on currently. And the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. 
And then he goes on and he says in 2 Chronicles uh, 20, um, let me just see. Jehoshaphat says that we are in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 12. He says, um, our God, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. And here is another key. But our eyes are on you. And so it takes every ounce of courage, every ounce of spiritual fortitude to look to the Lord for the solution. And the fact that we we do become unsettled, we do become concerned, that is completely human. But the only way to overcome that is to remind yourself of previous victories and then feed yourself on the word of what the Lord says he will do. So Jehoshaphat says, Lord, independence, we come to you. We don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you. That's in verse 12. And, and the Lord so graciously answers Jehoshaphat in, in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15. The Lord says, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all, that includes us, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And so he, the Lord says, we are, we, if we stand in our spiritual position, which is in fact in heavenly places, we are seated there. If we maintain that position, and we depend on the Lord to fulfill his word and to work his victory. And in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17, it says, the Lord says further to Jehoshaphat, and here are a number of keys for us. You will not have to fight in this battle. That is a given. <laughs> it's not, you might not have to fight. It's not that I'll call you later to come and fight. The Lord is saying, you will not be fighting. I will, he says, take up your position. Now, here are the keys. First of all, you have to take your position in Christ, in heavenly places. The second key is stand firm. That is taking the, um, holding the line, as I've sometimes said in the past. We need to hold the line where we've been put. That's where we stand. And that is where we Stand firm, and the Lord says, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Then another key is, be not afraid. Another key is, do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. And verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship, which will then include praise and singing. And so I just, I, I'm, I'm so encouraged by this scripture um, that the Lord has given us, that the battle, uh, the other thing which is a real reality for us as we battle the spiritual realm, when we look with our natural eyes and with our hearing the, the reports, the bad reports that are coming in, the battle lines of the enemy have not been weakened by the sounds of things. Circumstances have not changed yet. In fact, they're deteriorating if we, if we look in the natural. But the Lord is saying, receive my truth and believe it. And begin to sing and to praise and watch the Lord set the ambush. And I, I want to tell you about this video clip someone sent me to, to, to explain everything I have just said. When I woke up where the Lord has whispered to my spirit, I'm going to reverse the natural order of things. And this is one of the scriptures the Lord took me when I asked him, explain this to me. And then about two hours after I had actually heard those words in the morning, someone sent my husband a video clip in, the, in these storms we were having with... And it's a video clip taken at Table Mountain with these huge rivers of water rushing down. 
And Hello, Anna, do you have do you have the video? Do you have the video? No. Yes, I can, can post can it can on. You, um, put it on the chat. Yes, I will definitely do yeah. that. Rather uh, than you explain it all, because I, I I really like to say focused on the prayer rather than. Yes. Okay. You're but I, I amazing. It's fantastic. But if you can post that, or, yeah, post that on the chat, then people can look at it at their leisure. We've just got a few more minutes left, um, and there's a few other people I see that want to pray. So, um, yeah, I want to thank you for that um, teaching. It's amazing. It's so good to be refreshed, freshly reminded of um, what we need to do <laughs> and what God will do. And I totally agree with you on the uh, reading the Chronicle Victories of Ancient Israel. I mentioned that myself only about a month ago. And yeah, because that's how I actually can increase my own faith. So Leah, maybe you can just pray for a few minutes into what God's put on your heart. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm thankful for what Chantel was sharing because that happens through the believers. It was David that went through. The king, he feared. The armies of Israel, they feared. David went forth with the five stones through the man who was taunting the armies of the living God, as is occurring today. And so I lift up the messianic believers in Israel, Lord, that you, Lord, that they would be a blessing upon Israel, as they are the priests, the kings that you placed there. And there are so many that don't believe and 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 have have been blinded and 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 and, and so uh, in in Hebrews twelve is uh, okay um, in verses uh, uh, one and two. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set down the right hand of God. The Messianic believers are the only ones that can do that. Only ones. They have to bless Benjamin Netanyahu. They have to bless the Knesset. They have to be the voice of life. Has to be. Not an option. Has to be. For God, for Israel to be lifted up according to her place. And and and, and so, as, as I shared, I wanted to share... That, that that running that race, well, yesterday was the finals in the Olympics of the men's 1500 meters running race. And I don't know if any of you have seen it. I got to see the uh, the, the, the the first heat, all right? Was, and I was so inspired during brunch. I just happened to see it because we don't even have a TV, all right? And so, oh my gosh. And then and then I watched it uh, uh, and then I, I, I got the results. Yeah, Leah, just Leah, you, can, you, can you pray though? Okay. Because uh, and, and, and the, a few more people that we need to before okay. the hour, the, which is five minutes. All right. Um, the the prayer is that the two leads that were going to assure the victory as I ran and Hezbollah. But this last guy did three seconds better than his ever best time, and he beat them. And even the leader failed at the end. He lost his his run. Lord, help us to have faith. And he said at the end, after the race, well, well, what was your plan? And he said, well, I saw an opening and I let God carry me through. We Amen. have to be people of faith and not by sight. And Lord, forgive us for our weak faith. Forgive us for looking at all these things and fearing, as Bob John said, that we would be people of faith, knowing it, who it is that we trusted and to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. That was beautiful, a beautiful Holy Spirit inspired prayer, Blair. Thank you. And I do want to say to you that it's not just the voices of Messianic Jews, it's our voices joined together. It's the voices of the nations as well, which is you and everybody else who's not Jewish on this um, watch. We're running this race together. And we can only get the victory as you run together. So you can bless as well. Your voice is as powerful as any of anyone else's. So yeah, let's keep declaring. So we have um, Shantha, is it? I'm not sure if I've pronounced your name properly. But yeah, so Shantha. 
Yeah, okay, so before you pray, um, we've got a few more minutes left for you to make a declaration or a prayer. And Michael, I'd like to wrap this up with the ironic blessing. And I would like you to do that, or I'd like to ask you to do that if you agree, if you could uh, declare this blessing over Israel and over this Global Watch platform. And, and that blessing will extend to all those traveling to the uh, to the summit. And it would be extended far and wide. Okay, Shanta, thank you. Yeah, I want to uh, declare some, not some, if uh, Ephesians chapter 6 from 10, the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand against the wiles of the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, it says, therefore put on the loin girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Amen. God, praying Amen. always with prayer and supplication. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we cover them in the armor of God. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Wow. Amen, amen, amen. Michael, please um, release the blessing, this amazing blessing. Yivarecha Adonai Bayish Merecha. Ya'er Adonai Panav Alecha Vihunecha. Isa Adonai Panav Alecha Vyasam Lecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord manifest his presence to you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the great works you're going to do uh, over the next uh, day, Lord God. You're going to display your mighty power, Lord God. So we look to you, Lord God. We call upon your name. Whoever calls upon the name of Yeshua will be saved. So we thank you, God. You're going to deliver a mighty salvation to Israel, and you're going to do mighty acts, Lord God. Thank you for calling us together, and we just release everyone that should be there that they make their connecting flights. Amen, In amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Michael, thank you so much. That was a um, perfect way to finish this, to wrap it up. And uh, myself, and I'm sure each and every one of you are expecting God to do spectacular um, manifestations of his power and greatness uh, for Israel and for each of you and your households and your nations, because we have a great God. So thank you, everybody, for joining. I think it's just about right on the hour, so we did pretty good time-wise. Thank you for your contributions. And um, yeah. thank you, Great Chanel. Blessings, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.